Good morning, people of Holden and Dalla. This is our third Sunday of Advent, and we'll begin with our prayer for the lighting of the Advent wreath. Every year, we light candles as we prepare for the coming of Christ. More and more candles, more and more light, as we watch and wait for Jesus, the light of the world. God of promise, come into our darkness. Renew your hope, your peace, and your joy in us. For you alone bring life out of death. Receive God's promise of joy from Psalm 28. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in song. On this third Sunday in Advent, we are reading the last portion of Luke's first chapter. And it is when John the Baptist is born and his father breaks forth in song. On this third Sunday in Advent, we move so much closer to our celebration of Jesus' birth. We hear the gospel account of Jesus' cousin John being born. Now the birth of any child is special and memorable, but we know that John's birth marked a new moment in time, a new era for the entire people of Israel, as well as his own family. John's birth points to the coming of the Messiah, a Messiah who had been waited for for years from Jesus. It is a momentous moment. It is a hope-filled moment, leading the people gathered around his parents when he was born to ask and wonder, what then is this child going to be? For it is clear that the Lord's hand was with him. What then is this child going to be? When a child is born, as a child grows up, we ask these questions. When you ask a child themselves what they might want to be when they grow up, you get all sorts of amazing and creative answers. You may hear some of the children say that they want to be things they have seen, things they know, like teachers or farmers or doctors. Sometimes they may say that they might like to be like the celebrities they see, baseball players, football players, movie stars, musicians. Sometimes they talk about occupations that they admire for those who love adventure or heroic things like firefighters or astronauts going into the military. Do you remember your younger self and how you would have answered that question of what you wanted to be when you grew up? As we adults ask the question, we ask it full of curiosity and wonder, wondering what's stirring inside the children we know, knowing for each child a world of possibilities awaits them. When the people gathered around Zechariah and Elizabeth as the infant John was born, they wondered, what then is this child going to be? John was far too young to answer for himself. But Zechariah, his father, the one who had been struck mute until the child had been born, Zechariah bursts into song. The song that Zechariah sang has been used in the morning prayer of the church for almost 2,000 years. And it speaks of the tremendous faith and hope that God promises. First, Zechariah praises God, the God that has served in the temple, the God who has given him a son in his own age, the God who redeems his people. He says, praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. Zechariah sings of a God who saved his people, a God who is spoken of in the prophets, a God who has shown mercy to his people, rescued them from their enemies. Zechariah's words of praise ring from the rooftops. But then he goes on to sing about this child who was born. And you, my child, will be a prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those living in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the path of peace. This child, John, will be a prophet of the Most High. He will go before the Lord to prepare his way. John will guide his people in the path of peace. What an amazing future to be singing about for one's child. Yet in many ways, John's call is our call too, as individuals, as congregations, and as the church. 
This is why Zechariah's song has been sung every day as part of morning prayer for hundreds to thousands of years, because it reminds us of who we are and who we belong to. Just like Zechariah sings, we belong to a God who does amazing things and is true to his promises. We belong to a God who comes to his people and redeems them. And just like Zechariah sings, we have a calling, just like John. John's call was to be a prophet of the Most High, to point others to Jesus, to guide people in the path of peace. In the Gospel of John, John the Baptist is described in his adult years in this way. He was not the light, but came that he might bear witness to the light. We, too, can point others to Jesus. We, too, can guide others along the path of peace. We, too, can bear witness to the light. In these last few weeks of Advent, as Christmas comes ever closer and closer, consider how God is calling you to point others to Jesus, to guide others in the paths of peace, and to bear witness to the light of Christ. Amen.